All right, I told you there were two things we needed to worry about the significant figures when doing calculations. I covered one of them a minute ago. When you're doing metric conversions, okay, beginning of the class, when you're doing metric conversions, you have to be careful not to just add significant figures or take them away uh, because you're changing from one unit to the other. Just because I'm measuring something on my ruler in millimeters and then I change it to kilometers doesn't mean I created significant figures or lost them. All right? I have to have the same number. So that was one problem we had to worry about. And you found out some of those zeros are just placeholders, and you were able to tell the difference between them by that simple rule. The harder part is what I mentioned a little while ago also. If I do a calculation on my calculator, and I'll tell you what kind of calculator you're going to need to get probably by the end of this period, maybe tomorrow. We'll see. But if I do a calculation on my calculator, many times I'll get a number that will have like a repeating decimal place on it. All right, so I guess I use that as an example, 1 over 9. I'm going, not 1 over 9, 3 over 9. 3 over 9 is going to give me 1 third or 0.3333, repeating indefinitely on your calculator. Where do you round off? Well, it depends on your numbers that you use. You can't create significant figures. Kind of like if we think back to that ruler here. Matter of fact, let me get that ruler. Here, hold on. This ruler here. Okay, if I look at this ruler here, we were wrong in the beginning when we were saying stuff like that should just be 12. That should be 12. Yeah, I want black. That should be 12. I still want black. I still want black. It's not fair. I hit black. That's not right. I'm hitting black. It's better. We were wrong in the beginning when we say something like 12. All right, that's not right. We learned we had to use significant figures correctly. 12.00, 12.50, 12.93. But we'd be equally wrong if we were to just throw zeros after these numbers, right? That's just as bad. I can't really tell anything past that 12.93. I can't tell anything else after that. Those numbers are insignificant. They are actually useless to me. I've made them up. They're created out of, you know, fiction, okay? Well, those are the kind of numbers you get when you divide and multiply and add and subtract numbers in a calculator. I cannot end up with more or less, more significant figures or less uh, than I started out with. I use this ruler. I can't create and destroy uh, significant figures. All right, so let's get back to my thing. Um, so how do we, nope, that's what we already did. Having a rough time here. Here we go. So how do we keep them when we're performing calculations? That's what I want to show you now. Let's start out with addition and subtraction. There's one rule for this, and there's another rule for multiplication and division. simple rule for addition and subtraction. Here's what you got to do. You simply round your answer off to the least number of decimal places that you use in the calculation. Round your answer off to the least number of decimal places used in the calculation. And again, I'll illustrate this best with some examples. Okay, this will keep us from making ridiculous answers uh, using our calculators. Now, your 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 math classes don't care because in reality, math classes can have negative numbers, but I can't. There's no such thing as a negative mass. I can't have a negative answer for most of my calculations I'm doing. I have to have positive values. Your math class can have infinite numbers, and unreal numbers, and irrational numbers. We can't. We're dealing with real things. And in real things, I have to deal with their real precision. How, you know, the instrument I use, measuring that one, and not creating stuff. So if I were to add these guys up, I, I were doing some calculations, I was adding up these numbers. And they're all in grams, or they're in centimeters, or they're in something. 
And I measured them all with different instruments, obviously. All right? This one I measured with an instrument that can read the three decimal places. This one has four, and this one has one. What do I do? Well, I'm limited to the least at, well, the least precise of those instruments. I'm limited by that guy. So everybody, had, you know, you probably, some of you have, have a calculator. If you don't, I'm going to talk about what kind you get in a minute. Add those up on your calculator for me, somebody who has one. And tell me what you get. Some back here. How many do you need? Just one. Just one. Yeah. There you go. Thank you. All right. Add them up. Who got an answer? What did uh, <coughs> what'd you get, Sydney? 79.935. 79.935? Anyone else get that? I think you just pulled the wrong number in. Do that again. Uh, what would you get, Maggie? 79.1502. Uh, 79.1502. 79 Try it again. You probably just plugged the wrong number in. Um, and by the way, this is a great... I may as well say this now because it came up. How many points are you going to lose for doing that, for having a simple calculator error? The answer is, for even problems that are worth 10, 15, 20 points, if your error is simply a calculator and you have showed me the work, and the only error you made was like, like what she just did. You would only lose one point on the entire problem. Even if the problem takes you 15 minutes to do it and it's worth 25 points, you're not going to lose more than one point. And that goes for a test, anything, worksheet, anything. All right, so that's the calculator answer, correct? You write that down. Write calculator answer next to that. That is by no means the correct answer. Who wants to tell me the correct answer to this guy? Read the rule. See if you can apply it without me telling you any more information. Can you apply that rule to this problem? What do you think? What do you think? 79.2. 79.2. And again, if that's you guys, you wait till we're done here with this part, and then you can go. 79.2. Now let's see if everybody understands why it's 79.2. This guy has... Three decimal places, he has four, he has only one. I am limited to the least number of decimal places. The least, uh -huh, the, green the least number of decimal places used in the calculation. That guy has the least number. He has one. He has only one decimal place, correct? So therefore, my answer can only have one, and I'll round that guy up to a two. You got it? Okay? Good. All right, how about... Well, that's pretty easy. I don't even think I need to do a second example of that. But that's the correct answer. Let's do multiplication and division. What's the rule for that? Well, the rule is slightly different, but it's no harder to apply. The amazing thing is, we're going to get a lot more wrong now, as you'll see, for a, diff for a couple of reasons, for really two reasons, and I'll talk about each of them as we go on. Multiplication of division rule says this. Not, don't round to the least number of decimal places. Round to the least number of significant figures used in the calculation. Now, I will start getting some mistakes on these. Partly because of the application of the rule partly because mixing up the two rules now that you have more than one, and partly for another reason, which is very interesting. I think I want to make a point of that when I get to it. All right, let's start off with a fairly easy problem. Multiply these two guys out and tell me what you get on a calculator. Multiply those two guys. Uh, what do we get here? Base. 1.1088 is your calculator answer, correct? We got that? All right. 
That's the calculator answer. What is the correct answer? Now here, I want everybody to get their own answer in their head first. Okay? It's important you do this. When I ask you to do this, sometimes I'm going to actually force you to do it. I'm going to actually do it in a few minutes. I'm going to want you to write down the answer. Okay? Because a lot of you don't do it. Fact, let's start right now. Everybody write down what you think the correct answer is. that one. What do you think the correct answer is? I can just walk around and see it. Write it down. Because otherwise, I don't think a lot of you are doing it. I think a lot of you are just waiting for me to call on somebody else. And then you'll figure it out. What do you think the right answer is? What's the right answer? What's the right answer? Write it down. I don't care if you get it wrong. Write it down. Write it down. I want to see what you think is the right answer. I've seen a lot of different answers, three different answers so far. This is why I want you to do this. That's exactly why. I've seen four, five different answers now. This is, per, it, it, it's a, it, you know, this is what you, you, you have to do that if you want to learn. You've got, especially now that we're into the math part of it, you cannot passively receive this information. You must actively participate in this or you're getting nothing. Writing down the numbers 1.1088 and writing the word calculator next to it without thinking about the next step and waiting until I write the next step down is getting you absolutely nothing. You will have no idea or you'll, you'll get nothing from it. Let's see what we got for some. I saw at least five different answers out here. Okay? Let's read the rule. You have to round the answer off to the least number of significant figures used in the calculation, not decimal places. So those of you who thought, my answer's got to have two decimal places, you're wrong. It does not need two decimal places. It needs two significant figures. Because that's how many significant, that's the least number. How many significant figures are in point two two? Two. You get that for your answer. What is two significant? What is that guy rounded off to two significant figures? One point one. Now a lot of people are erasing right now. They don't have one point one. I told you you would see more mistakes on this one, and they're not going to go away. Many people had one point one one or one point one zero, thinking I think you're thinking that I have to have two decimal places because that's what the rule said. The rule didn't say that. The previous rule said that. If this was addition and subtraction and you got this answer, yes, the answer would be 1.11. It is not. I, I saw other answers that were, were worse. I don't know where they came from, but we'll, I, we'll see if we can figure it out as we go along. So that's the correct answer. Okay? I'm not just going to do one of these. I'm going to do more of these. Okay? Try this guy. I want to divide those two numbers. Let's see what you get. Divide them on a calculator. We'll write the correct answer down, and then you're going to tell me. You're going to write down what you think, I'm sorry, with the calculator answer, write down what you think the correct answer was. Now this answer will actually differ depending on who I call on. Because some of your calculators will carry out more decimal places than others. Let's see. Ethan, what did you get when you divided those two numbers? That's what he got. Some people with a longer uh, screen on your calculator might have gotten even more numbers past that, correct? Okay. That's all right. Write that down. That's plenty, obviously. That's the calculator answer. Who wants to show, tell me what they think the correct answer is? Raise your hand. Everybody, everybody get an answer this time. Again, don't write it down this time. You don't have to. But I think you'll probably be right. You may not. We'll see. See if you get it right this time. What do you think? Zach? He says 0.159, and I agree. Has everybody pretty much gotten that? Now, if I were a bad teacher, which I am not, I am the best teacher you're ever going to have for Chemistry 1 Honors. I'm actually the only teacher ever going to have for Chemistry 1 Honors. That's why I can say that. Um, but if I, were, if I were an inexperienced teacher, I would think, yeah, I'm good. I just taught them that with two examples. And then I realized when you got your tests and you got your worksheets and you got your quizzes and you got to be a problem like that, almost everybody's getting them wrong again. What did I do wrong? Do that one. 
there's another mistake you'll make. I've corrected several of them, but there, or the main, one main one, not reading the rule correctly or mixing up the rule. But the bigger mistake is something that has nothing to do with significant figures. I want everyone to write, well, first of all, we'll get the calculator answer. What's the calculator answer for this guy? Everybody do that first. All right. If you have a calculator. And by the way, at the end, I told you I will talk to you about your calculator. What kind do you want to get? All right. If you have a calculator and you did that one, what would you get, Maggie? Oh, she, hers put it into scientific notation. I would rather it, who has it in just standard notation on your thing? You, you just got to put it to scientific notation. What is it? Anybody got regular notation? What do you have? 0.00089905. Okay. 0.00089905, blah, 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 blah. I just rounded it up to one. Okay? All right. So that's what most calculators will show you. If you have a graphic calculator like that one that's set to put them into small numbers or big numbers into scientific notation, it will do that for you. But um, uh, And we're going to talk about, that's one whole topic, whole day, we're going to talk about scientific notation, exponential notation. However, here's my question to you. And this time I need you to write it down. Write it down again, underneath this guy. What's the correct answer? I'm going to walk around and I want to see everybody this time. What do you think the correct answer? Round that off. Use the rule. Round it off. Zero correct answers. Pretty sure there are no correct answers. None. Here's some of the answers I saw. Very popular was. Very popular was point eight nine. Or point nine oh. Also very popular was point zero zero. Alright. Those were very popular answers. They're all wrong. So if you have any one of those three, and that's probably the majority of you, they're wrong. They're not even close. They're really bad. And they're really bad for a couple of reasons. Obviously, for one reason, is you didn't use the rule. But the main reason is not because of the rule, but because of rounding off. You have a problem with this. People who did this did not round off. They moved the decimal. They changed the value of that number by a factor of a thousand. That's what they did. That is a very bad answer. Much worse than significant figures. People who did this did not use the rule. All right? Because how many significant figures were in this guy? How many? None are significant, are they? Because there's a decimal. Well, you start, you cross out all the non -zero, all the zero, the zeros, that's all zeros. So he's got no numbers, no significant figures. What the correct answer is, is that. How many had that? One. I missed that one. No, you didn't. You had 089. Somebody did, I saw. Right? No, who did it? I saw somebody else did it. Okay, good, good. I, I, and I, and I, I missed several. There were sort of four right answers. I missed them all. But uh, I missed him because he didn't have it written down when I went by him. Probably you didn't either. And then uh, the other people, I just... This red. Four out of 26 people got that right. And because of rounding up. So that's why I was just saying a minute ago, an inexperienced teacher would have just thought to myself, I taught that. This is all good. And then they get a test back, and almost no one would get this question right. Why? Because there's something they didn't cover, and that is rounding off. Let's talk about rounding off. How do you round off correctly? Now, I have no notes to give you on this. I'm just going to give you examples, and I'm going to have you write them down again, at least in the beginning. Round the following numbers off to two significant figures. 
This happens when you have to do a calculation, especially multiplication and division. You multiply and divide, you get your calculator answer. It's this big, long screen, and i got to know where to round them off to. Okay, let's say I do my calculation. This is, by the way, tomorrow. You're going to be get doing this worksheet, and it's going to be graded. You're going to hand it in at the end of the period. You're going to be graded. You're going to do this worksheet. A lot of that worksheet is exactly what I'm doing right here. Okay? Let's look at this first one. 281.40. You, you do that on your calculator, and that's the answer you get. Everybody, write down, again, to the right of this one, because we're going to do a whole bunch of them. Write down what you think the correct answer is. And I'm going to walk around and see. What is that guy rounded off to two significant figures? Don't worry, I am going to explain it. Some of you say, well, I don't get it yet. You're right. You're not supposed to get it. You're going to get it in a minute because I'm going to be playing poker with somebody, as you'll see. And I want to play poker with him. Come on. I want to, I don't want to play poker. Come on. Panicking you. No, I want to play poker with Gabe. I don't want to play poker with you. At least I don't want to lose. I want to play poker with him. Yeah. Not a lot of right answers here, people. What's up? More than the other one. Oh my god, do I want to play poker with you? And lose. Very interesting answer there. <laughs> Very popular answer, very popular answer for this one is, well, before I get to the point, let, let's, let's ask um, uh, Gabe. What did you have for your answer? 28. 28. Okay. I play poker with Gabe, okay? And we, I'm losing badly. I'm losing badly to Gabe. Y'all listen to this because this is actually going to make it clear what you did wrong. And again, most of you got this wrong. And most of you for the same reason. 28 was a very popular answer. Many people had 28. Okay. I play poker with Gabe all night long. I'm losing badly. At the end of the night, I owe him $281.40. I tell him, I don't have correct change. He's, You're ruining the punchline! $281.40 I owe him at the end of the night. I say, I don't have correct change. He says, that's okay. We'll just round it off. Give me $28. Is $28, $281.40 rounded off? No. Any of you did that? I really want to know Lexi, because Lexi wanted me to give her 28 cents. <laughs> 28 cents is what I would owe her at the end of the night. Now, what's the correct answer? Let's see how many of you actually had this. And be careful, it actually has to be exactly... Oh, 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 oh. It has to be... <laughs> 280. No decimal after it, but 280. No decimal. If you have a decimal after it, that's still wrong. Now, let me explain to you why. Here's what you've been doing wrong all your lives. Actually, not all your lives, but the last 15 minutes. All right. Here's what you've been doing wrong. You've been assuming because I have to round it out to two significant figures, I can only have two numbers there. All right. And I'm going to, whatever it takes, come hell or high water, I'm going to get two numbers. So two numbers is 28, and everything else just goes away. That's not true. Remember what you're doing when you round off. When you round off, you're simply estimating the number, all right? You're dropping all the other stuff that's insignificant, but it should still be approximately the same number. 280 is approximately 281.40, all right? 28 is not a pro I'm not rounding off 280 by making it 28. I'm moving a decimal place by doing that. You cannot move a decimal when you're rounding off. Let's try another one. Keep that in mind for this one. I cannot move a decimal. Try it. Write your answer down. But I still have to have it rounded off to two significant figures. 
So in this one, we're going to see another mistake people are going to make. People are going to say, well, all right, I won't move a decimal. My answer is 0 0.00. How many significant figures are in 0 0.00? Zero. None. You're basically rounding it off to this point right here and dropping the rest of those guys. So 0 0.00037 would be a good answer. Got it? If you just left it at point zero zero, the reason that's wrong isn't because you moved the decimal. You left the decimal where it was. You just dropped all those numbers. And you didn't keep the rule because the rule says it has to have two significant figures. That's what I said. Well, it doesn't, that's not what the rule says. That's what I'm asking you to do in this case. If you did a calculation and you had to round it off to two significant figures, you could not put point zero zero down. That has zero significant figures. How many significant figures are at point zero 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 three seven? Two. Because when there's a decimal, I start to the left, cross out those zeros, and everything after is significant. Good. Next one. Now we should be getting good at this. I would hope that whereas in the first time I had only four correct, I would hope that this time I may only have one or two or three wrong. Round him off. Keep poker in mind. Round him off to the correct number of significant figures. And write down your answer. I'm coming around again. How many significant figures? How many am I supposed to have? Is that approximately that? More mistakes than I'm expecting at this point. Better, getting better, getting better. How many significant figures are in that? Is that your answer? How many significant figures are in that? How many should there be? How many significant figures are there? How many are you supposed to have? Getting more right, but still nowhere near as many. Again, I'm playing poker with you. There's 45, approximately 456. <sighs> okay. <laughs> this is tough. But it's the reason we're doing this. I really didn't expect to see. Still, about a quarter of you getting these wrong. And the popular answer is still being, well, 45. 460 would be the correct answer. All right, let me use this as an analogy. Let's say, let's take Taylor. Taylor, you have a bank account? You do? All right. Let's say Taylor has $456 in the bank, in her bank account, in her checking account. You're rich. Pretty good. Let's have a job. Taylor calls up. Hey, I think there's a problem with my account. Could you tell me how much money is in my account? And the lady, the teller says, Oh, uh, let me see. It's about four. It's about forty-five dollars. She'd be panicked. I got four hundred and fifty-six dollars in my account. Wouldn't you be panicked? I'd be panicked. Forty-five is not close to four hundred and fifty-six. That's how much is in her account. They, well, I'll round it off. They got about 400, they got about 45. Rounding off 456 is not 45. It's 460. If she said, you got about 460 in your account, she would have said, okay, great, my account's good. If she said, I got 45 in my account, something's drastically wrong, right? You can't move the decimal place. You are merely estimating the number by, and, and making it less specific. But you can't move the decimal. Let's try again. This is a tough one. Nobody's going to get this one right. Round that guy off to two significant figures. Well, raise your hand. Somebody thinks they know this one. Lexi. What? 
the same thing. It is the same. How many significant figures are in point zero one three? Two. Two. So those of you who wanted to make a point zero one, the rule says if there's a decimal, I have to cross that zero out. There's only one significant figure in that. Have I managed to confuse the crap out of all of you yet? Good. Let's do another one. Here's actually a good reason for doing all these. You realize what I'm doing here is nothing beyond elementary type of stuff. Estimating numbers. I'll bet you did estimating numbers in elementary school. And yet, look how bad you are. And the main reason is, it's one of those things where you can't see the forest for the trees. I've given you some new information. I've talked to you about significant figures. And now you're trying to apply it, that new information, over your old information, and somebody wins out. You've got to mesh the two together. How about this guy right here? 2.40. What would he be in significant figures? Just two of them. Round it off. Come on now. Come on. Come on. Let's do it. Put your answer down. What do you think it is? I'm sick of walking around. Do you have an answer? If you're not putting an answer down, oh, he's not walking around, I'm not going to pull him down. You're not learning anything. You have to have something that you can at least assume. Did you put that? And how do I put that as an answer? Raise your hand. Better. Better. Let's try another one. This is not Taylor's bank account. I don't think she's got $759,000 in her account. But if it were, and she called up, and she only has $76 in there, anybody got $76 in there, I'm going to have to hit you with the bazooka. What's the correct answer? Gavin. 760,000 is the correct answer. Finally got it? I got one more little twerk, twerk, yeah. <laughs> Miley Cyrus. One little tweak to this. Uh, one more little tweak to this. This guy right here. If I had to round him off two significant figures. This would be a tough one. I wouldn't expect you to get this one right until I help you with it because it has to do with those drunks again. You're going to have to use a what? A bar, exactly. Look at right now he has how many significant figures? Careful, how many significant figures in that guy right now? Four, because there's a decimal, you draw the line from the left. So they're all significant. If I wanted to round that off to just two, it wouldn't be 20. It would still be 2,000, because that's how many dollars I have in my bank account. But I would have to put a bar over that guy. See what I'm saying? See it? That's what that guy was applying. All right, that's the last one. Your homework, I'll give you. You can start it on. You have plenty of time to get this started. By the way, I am probably going to check this homework because you're getting going to get more of this. We're, we're not even halfway done with this chapter. It's a long chapter, longer than the first one. And uh, I'm probably going to check this homework pretty soon, like Monday or Tuesday of next week. So make sure you're getting caught up. That's the homework for tonight. And for some reason... And there it is.